Are we ready? Okay. One take. Nobody fuck this up. Welcome everybody to the podcast. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We're gonna be dancing. <laughs> we dance are, off. We're rocking it out in here, man. So what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna be talking about uh, different seller experiences that we've had, right? First of yeah. all, I'd like to say thank you to our backup singers. They did an amazing job. Thank you, ladies. You're rocking it out. You guys can sit down now. Yes. The crowd is going wild. <laughs> the, the stadium crowd. <laughs> But yeah, so, seller experiences. Like I will just say, like I've been doing this for about two months now, and like I had no newbie. idea about some of the like talk about like South Kansas City and some of the conditions of living. And, Dude, you've been in some good ones. You oh, really yeah. have. Oh, like, yeah. As soon as you came on board, like we it was had, my we had some first crazies. week. It was my first week, and it was uh, those two ladies that had no utilities, and I was just <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, that the people pe- live that way. Well, yeah, I've this, been in some like that. Yeah, and I, I mean, it, it broke my heart, but it was just like, I mean, I live in the Plaza area, and it's just like a completely different reality, but yeah, it's not that far away. No, it's not, no, man. It's right around the corner. Very eye-opening. So everybody's got this idea that real estate's very sexy and glamorous, and sure. you know, especially what you see on TV. Yeah. You see million-dollar homes being flipped, and mm-hmm. yeah, that is kind of cool, and that is sexy, but like our, our bread and butter is not those big, sexy houses. They're, no. they're rentals is our bread and butter. Yeah, they're more lower income properties and yep. with good uh good great, high rents. Great cash flow yeah. properties. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, so we went to this house. I think one of the first ones that we did mm-hmm. uh was that property over on Norton, I think it was. Yes, yes it was. And like, yeah, you didn't know what you were getting into, man. No, I had no <laughs> idea. So we met the seller over there and uh so I was all mic'd up, right? Mm-hmm. So we're trying to do this incognito. He had his camera with the lav mic hooked up right. to it and everything, and we started walking through and so she was playing it off like, yeah, you know, I don't, I stay here sometimes, but I kind of, I live with my brother-in-law, right, or mm-hmm. whatever, my sister. But you could tell, dude, she totally lived there. And come to find out, it was a, just an inherited property. They had picked it up, or they had inherited it, uh, inherited it, it, too many Ds, inherited it uh, a couple years ago. And the property was in a trust, and it didn't go through probate, and there was like a $45,000 mortgage on it too. And, and, you know, it's just uneducated people is all it is. Like she didn't, in her mind, when her mom passed away, she thought that the mortgage went away, right? Which, boy, I would love for it to work yeah, that way. Yeah, that'd be nice. That, that would be cool. Actually, no, that probably wouldn't be because then you'd be knocking people off left and right. <laughs> there'd, be, there'd be too much motivation there. Like, yeah, sorry, uh, mom and dad died, so I got the house now. <laughs> Yeah, but the but the her living conditions were just it, it was it was like Josh said it was heartbreaking it was deplorable well, the house was unlivable so she hadn't had utilities in like a year and a half there had been a small uh, fire in the kitchen that was like all the damage was still there too like you could see the sheetrock where it had it had been burnt and had fallen down and some of the rafters were burnt mm-hmm. uh, yeah and no utilities at all no electricity no water and start thinking about all right. the implications of you uh-huh. know yep. you know what it takes. As human beings, to keep yourself clean, right. it takes a lot of water. And this poor lady, man, just just living there. So, and we actually ended up we couldn't do anything mm-hmm. because it still had a deed of trust. You know, uh, we couldn't buy the property for what she owed on it just because it needed so much work. Right. And uh, you know, just really had to back out of the deal. So the thing is, too, like, so she never got any foreclosure papers. Or, this is what she told us. Now, whether that's true or not, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, you know, but nobody ever contacted them. They never got any letters from the bank. It's just, uh, you know, it, one of those deals where the property uh, probably just got written off by the bank. But what happens is they still have that deed of trust there. So mm-hmm. how, how would you ever get clear title on that? Sure. I've, I've had one that was kind of similar. Um, and, uh, you know, this was years ago. It's been a while since I've had one that bad. But, you know, we went and looked at this property and um, this guy was, he was alcoholic. You could tell, you know, you just smell it on him. It's like, oh yeah, you guys are, co- oh, come on in. I'll show you the place. It's like, like it was a like, shot. A, like it was that episode of Cribs or something, you know, he's like, oh, you know, this is the living room and this is the whatever. And, you know, and you go in the bathroom and it's like, nope, uh, leaving that place. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, he just, it's like he'd been using it. I think he was using pictures of water to get things down and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's better than most people. At least he was trying to do that. Yeah. But still, it was like flies everywhere. Yeah. You know, he had, you know, blankets hanging from the windows with the window up. So it'd be some breeze. And it's just like, 
you know, I mean, I guess some, some of the people, smell out. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people live that way and it's just, uh, it's amazing how dirty some of these houses can be. And like, even if I tried to make them as dirty as they are, it's like, yeah. I don't think I could. Yeah. I could not yeah. clean my house for six months right. and it would still be way cleaner than a lot of them. Well, what about yeah. Quincy? Quincy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, so as far as uh, that was a, an interesting, interesting situation, the house itself was great. Yeah. The house was it, pretty clean. It was awesome. Now I did have a horrible roach infestation, mm-hmm. right? Which is easy, easily taken care yeah. of. But that was the, the whole well, situation. They had some trash sitting in the kitchen there that, which is probably causing that by the back door. So overall, yeah. like all it needed was a, uh, basically a rent turn. Right. Uh, the rear, the weird situation about Quincy was we thought that the property was vacant mm-hmm. and ended up having a tenant with the lease. We sold it as a vacant property, and you know it, it really turned in. You know what? It really wasn't that big of a deal because we went back over there when we figured out that somebody was living there. We offered them cash for keys. They accepted it, and they were out within what four days. I mean, it was very, yeah, it was less very than a quick. Week. I was mostly just talking about like but, that diaper room. Like, it's just like it's I, I family's that. living here, and it huh? There was a diaper room in there. Well, it yeah. was like upstairs. Oh, it was I, yeah, a, I didn't go upstairs. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like just seeing something like that. It's just like there's there was what three well, of that them. One, that I think one so, couldn't yeah. work any per any more perfect. I, I don't any think more I've perfecter. Had, Perfecter. Yep. I've never had one go that smooth. Yeah. Something that was so messed up turn out okay like that. Yeah. yeah it was, they it just was happened to show good. up. You know, a couple of them had bowling balls in their shirts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, Literally. They, they were. <laughs> and then, you know, they were very cooperative. And I think they were more excited. And anything, it was just more of a, like, I don't know where we're going, but, you know, we yeah. want the money. Yeah. So. We got cash in our pocket now. We're happy. Yep. So yep. We had an That's interesting... a great strategy, too. To just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Cash for keys. Mm-hmm works really well no it does so i i've rarely had people turn down like on occasion you'll get that one person that's just really not smart enough to figure out exactly you know that you are there to help them yeah and they're, they're trying to stubborn. walk away you know so yeah it happens except our legs got eaten up like when we were sitting oh, out there on that yeah. porch that, that was whole horrible. day was horrible yeah geez the bugs were out in full force that day it was <laughs> yeah. that's yeah rich people problems right there I like know. the worst thing we have to complain about is <laughs> a mosquito bite you guys have so to stay here and we, live here, but we had the just, bugs. We just made a ton of money from the deal, but man, those damn mosquito bites, man. Yeah, they yeah. were just it was brutal. eating us alive. So one of the funny things about real estate is you go into a lot of houses, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the worst experiences that I've had is going in. This is when I was first getting started and like being covered from like my feet, like all the way up to my shoulders in Please. fleas. Like Fleas literally, literally thousands of them too, and you yeah. can't unless you've got light pants on. Uh, you, you know, can't you, see them. You can't see them, uh, yeah. or unless you have too many, a ton <laughs> until, of them, then you can feel them. <laughs> until you get into the car and you're driving yeah. away, and then it takes like five or ten minutes, and you need to look down. And you glance, and you're like, oh man, what's going on? I got there's, there's a flea, <laughs> yeah, right. And then oh, there's another flea, and then you and see, then, then you hundreds. see them on your shirt. And you're like, oh my god, I'm covered with them. Uh-huh. I've, I've had that happen like five Sounds or like six times. Sounds like a scary man. movie. Like, well, April or it could have been actually Kara that asked me. Is this like, well, you had the like any fleas yet? And like, no. She's like, oh, no, you just wait. you will. Yeah, you just wait. You will. Well, That'd be like my badge of honor though. The year. So the thing with fleas is like they can get on you, and it's not like you're like covered in bites instantly. Mm-hmm. You know, you can you can get but, a, if if you see them, you can brush them off easily. They can be. They can actually even be on your clothes for a while, and you can brush them off. And it's like I've never had like a ton of flea bites from walking through a house. I've never had any when that house, that other one that was that we sold that same guy um, that we had to clean out. Yep. Um, there was fleas in there, and uh, one of the girls I was cleaning it out. Like I went to go pay the dumpster and pay them, you know, to, for the stuff, and her back was just ate up. Like they were biting her. Which I've never had that problem, I never or, have or if they did, maybe it just didn't irritate maybe she just, me. Maybe she brought the fleas with her. <laughs> no, pets. the fleas were in there, because <laughs> <laughs> they were in there before I went there. I didn't want to go in the house that time. I was like, you know, kind of stand outside. It's fun to sit here and talk about all these, you know, like bug experiences and weird seller experiences. And like, you go into enough properties, you're just going to run into that stuff. So, you know, but when I when I encounter that stuff, what do I see, man? All I see is opportunity. I, I love houses that stink and smell bad and that are full of trash. We just bought one uh, about two months ago. It was probably one of the worst hoarder houses that I've ever bought. We buy a lot of hoarder houses. And we ended up taking 34 loads to the dump to get it clean. That was, that Which was, one was that? just, that was the one over on Evanston. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was bad. So it, it was bad in a way, too, where there was the guy was that was living there. The guy, like, the, from the day that we closed on it, like, he had been living there. 
uh, with no utilities and like the whole thing too. And like, so in most hoarder houses, when you go in, you know, there'll be a path that you can walk on, like with stuff mm -hmm. on each side, right? Piled yeah, up. up. Well, in this one, like you, the, the path that you walk through was four feet high off the ground of just, that's just newspaper. And like, I saw a dead cat and uh, the guy was diabetic mm -hmm. too. So there was literally needles. thousands and thousands of needles mm -hmm. laying everywhere. Yep, I've had those houses. So my guy that was taking stuff to the dump, they actually told him to stop bringing it. And he had to find another dump to go take it to just because of all of the needles. needles yeah. You know, but we bought that house super cheap. We're actually just getting ready to wrap up construction on it too. And it's going to be a 750 rent. And it's going to end up being a great deal, man. And that house was a, just a blight on mm -hmm. the neighborhood. As soon as we bought it, the uh, the city Neighbors. like contacted us the yeah. next day and said, hey, you need to get this cleaned up. So we told them our plan, we showed them our budget and what we're going to do with it. And after that, they were really willing to work with us. And it's it's actually gone pretty smooth, knock on wood, right? Yeah, and it's funny because a lot of times, uh, and I'm sure this happened on this one, but, uh, you know, the neighbors will come over and it's like they'll thank you and everything else and you know, I, I like doing that stuff too. You know, it's not just all about the money, but it's also helping those people. Helping the neighborhood. Yep. I'd be pissed if a house was sitting next to mine and I didn't know anything about real estate and I was just, you know, your average Joe. And, you know, that would just irritate me. Just yep. having this thing next to next door. The, that's just Yeah, your an property eyesore. values are down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, imagine like having some sort of festivity or people over at your place and you're like, yeah, this is my place. And there's that piece of S and, across and the street. People, I, I've Here's actually bought a couple too that uh, the neighbors had collectively had the city like kick them out of the house because they were so bad. Jesus. You know, we had this one, we called it the cat house and uh, we got this thing for $2,000. <laughs> the cat house. And uh, you go inside and I mean, there was literally like hair up the walls. Like the blinds have been like, you know, you could tell something was hanging on them. There was hair everywhere. There was one bedroom we called it the litter box because there was litter there was that literally literally litter <laughs> litter in there and cat piss and crap everywhere and just i mean it was wow. horrible the people had to go in with masks it was it was <laughs> one of the worst ones i've had Ooh, that sounds like a beauty sounds like a lot of money we only put 2500 into that oh yeah 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 crazy we, man we sold it for 10 nice so here's a, a scenario that we run into quite a bit uh where They'll either be an out-of-state owner or somebody who you know has just bought a property. Um, and actually, the one I'm talking about right now, the own, the owner it lives in Kansas City, and the property is in Kansas City too. We actually went and viewed this yesterday. Uh, but a lot of times they'll buy a property and they won't have you know the money to fix it up. I mean, let's face it; it's expensive to own real estate. It's expensive to maintain it and have it look good and have it be livable for long periods of time. That's why you've got to buy correctly and have good systems in place. What happened with this person is they had a house and uh, made a deal with a tenant buyer to fix the property up. And, I, and this is in an up-and-coming area in Kansas City. It's over in Northeast in a nice, neat little pocket. Uh, like, we saw some really good – we shot some really good video of it yesterday, too. Like, some of the houses over there, like, uh, uh, it's a very high uh, Hispanic population. And they are fixing those houses up, like, to the, to the nines, man. Like, they are nice. Where is this one at? Uh, this was the one over on Morrell. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Uh, so, like the house right across the street had a brand new thirty-year timberline roof on it, had brand new siding, uh, these beautiful landscape blocks. You know, the, I don't. Uh, the the driveway was like stamped concrete, like like way over the top for the area. Like you know, it was a they they just did a really good job. And then all the other houses too, they were just like little bungalows, and you can tell that families live there and they're cleaning it up, and you know, mm -hmm. it was nice. But then you had this house. Uh, where uh, the person had been living there and supposed to be fixing it up, and which never happens. It, it, no, it doesn't. Not in that situation. And the house was like, like, give me your thoughts on the house, Josh. As far as like what kind of condition, <laughs> <was> it? <laughs> the I, facial expression said it all. Yeah, I know. Well, Let's okay, get that so shot on camera. We were, we were driving separately yesterday, and my Google Maps like brought me a few houses up, and I was like, oh, this is nice. And then I saw your car a little bit down the way, and came down over to you and be like, oh, this is it. And it looked like a derelict, like it was- Junkyard. It, yeah, it, it looked abandoned. But I did uh, I did love the uh, the guy, like his brother, right? The, yeah. the brother of the owner, like- uh, what was Lives it? across the street. He's like, he's like uh, you, what, you trim trees? He's like, no, man, I cut them down and I'm good at it. Like that guy was, and he had a beer in his hand. He was so, like the first thing he says to Marcus, like gives him his card and be like, hey man, you wanna, like whatever. You're working but, his business, man, hard. But anyway, we get in there and there were some- there was a lady there with a with a kid, and my first thought was, it's getting cold now. 
like and i don't think they have any heat or whatever yeah. like because we were looking through i mean like the house was completely devastated i, I like, would where's say the it kid was go not or, livable yeah that's what i well, would I was say just saying, was. like where's the kid go and like i saw like in the bedroom like there was just all this stuff just cluttered all around like that's where they probably sleep and upstairs like the, the, the least occupied room where it's just one room with the crib but still like do they put the kid in there and it's like leave him at night and he's just cold and there's mice everywhere uh, yeah, it's, i don't know and, and there was fire damage too right yeah there was yep yeah so there was a lot of open framing Mm-hmm. So yeah, even if it did have heat in the winter time, it wouldn't really do any good because no insulation, right? Or very little insulation, and yeah, it was. The, we're walking around filming, and she, you could tell she was actually pretty mortified for us to see the property. She really didn't want us to take any pictures or do anything. She's like, "Oh, let me let me clean it up, and then you can come back in a couple of days, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So so it looks good." And like the thing is too, she knew that she was that she was living there, her and her husband, and they were supposed to be fixing it up, and they weren't. You know, whether, yeah. you know, and the thing is too, like that takes so much money. So I walked through the entire house and that house needs about $30,000 in work to, to get it like livable. That's the, that's how bad the, the property was in. Yeah. It, it, there's no way that somebody in that neighborhood and being in their situation is just going to have the funds to be able to get it fixed up and, and make it, make it profitable too. But she even pitched me too. She goes, listen, if you buy the house, you know, do you mind if we stay? Like we can do better than this. Do you hear her oh, say that? Yeah. I heard her say that. Like that was another thing too. So it's like, her was like, let me clean this up. Like it's not just like a mess in the kitchen lady. Like Sorry for the mess guys. Yeah, as exactly. if it was just something well, new. Sorry right. it broke the house. It's broken. Sorry. House but is a mess. I don't know. Like, <laughs> That that was actually quite sad to me. Like it was. And, uh, she was almost like talking to you, like you were just looking at the property, but like almost like she was in trouble or something yeah. like that. Like this, the amount of shame that she felt. Yeah, she did feel shameful because she knew that she wasn't upholding her end of the bargain, and the house was in very deplorable conditions. Right. Like yeah, like Josh said, man, there was literally mice like scattering as we're walking through and going upstairs, and you know, and she's she, good grief. How old was the kid? Probably two, year yeah. and a half. You know, two years old. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was, and that's it was what's sad. great about you know how the the company that we have is because we can actually get in there and we can you know fix that stuff and we're not just wholesaling them. I mean, we actually buy a lot of them and wholesale mm-hmm. some of them, but you know, just being able to get in there and actually fix that problem for her. So that um, is such a good feeling to be able to go in and prove a house like that mm-hmm. and put a good family in there and make yeah. it a good. You know, that's really, what we're good at. Really, an asset for the entire community. It you is. know, like we'll pay the taxes on it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. Um, we'll keep the upkeep going on it, mm-hmm. and uh, overall property values in that neighborhood will go up immensely. You know, if we can make a deal on that one too. So I agree. So if uh, you guys are looking for more information about us, if you could just uh, you know look at the link below this, you can go to our website, or uh, you know you can find us on Twitter. Mine is J Dunwoody two, D Wood, and uh, Marcus is M Painter three. Yep. Hit us up on social media. Ask yeah, we're any always questions. on there. Yep. We can rock it out. Let's. Uh, we're always looking to bring in new people, and you know, at the end of the day, we just want to do more deals, right? Yeah, that's what it's all about. So let's rock more it out. More deals and more money. We'll see you guys on the next one.